Um, I think that there, I think it's a complex narrative. So I think that that is one sort of component in this, which is that um, unemployment benefits are, are quite generous at the moment. Um, and for maybe about uh, one third of people who could potentially be going back to the labor force, those unemployment benefits may pay more than what they would receive if they went back to work. But I think there's more to it than that, uh, which is that we still have an ongoing pandemic. You know, in the United States, we still have you know, well over 10,000 new COVID cases per day. We have you know, hundreds of people dying of it per day on average. Um, and a lot of the remaining people who could potentially go back to work would be asked to work in very crowded environments like restaurants. Um, so there is a still a sort of pandemic component to this that's sort of interacting with those generous unemployment benefits and maybe holding back recovery temporarily. Eric, I, I agree with something you said in your first answer, and I disagree with it. You said you think the uh, inflation has exceeded the Fed expectations. I think it probably has. But where's your evidence? Where's my evidence that it's exceeded their expectations? Because they're not giving us any clues on that front. And I think it's very important to know whether it has, because they're saying it's transient, it's transient, it's, uh, it's one-off factors, it's base factors. But they're not telling us uh, that they actually believe it's gone past what they thought it was. But I agree with you. I think they probably do think that, though. Well, you know, I think that the nine tenths of one percent surge in uh, core inflation um, in April did come as a surprise to many people. That was a big jump, and I think that uh, what is surprising maybe to to everybody is the degree to which these bottlenecks are pushing prices higher. Um, and you're seeing so many different ones. You're seeing it in the lumber market. You're seeing it in raw materials. Um, you're seeing it in the problems we're seeing with shipping. Um, and I think it's becoming more and more evident that these problems are not limited to just one month and that they may persist um, at least for another three or four months. And so I think the question that the Fed is grappling with is, does inflation take root beyond, say, the month of September or October? Um, we, at what point do these supply problems kind of get sorted out and everything goes back to normal? That's a really, really important question. I don't think anybody knows the answer to yet.